Hello, everyone, and welcome to Trek Cannon, man, a bootleg edition. Why am I doing the bootleg edition for a review of uh, Season 2, Episode 1 of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, The Broken Circle? Well, because, I, look, let me tell you something about this episode. Let's just get right into it. Um, first of all, it's good to have Strange New Worlds back. It's nice to have them back on the, on the screen. It's nice to have uh, new episodes uh, to watch again. That being said... Maybe I was expecting too much from uh, this new season. Maybe I was. Maybe the anticipation had just got too high. Maybe the writing from Star Trek, the uh, season three of Picard. Uh, maybe they did it for me. maybe the first season of Strange New Worlds because of all of the uh, uh, problem kids that I was having with Discovery and all of them. You know, to actually have some decent writing, I, I was like impressed. But this is the thing. I wanted to talk about first what I liked about Star Trek Strange New World season two, episode one, The Broken Circle. What I liked about it first, right off the bat, you had Carol Cove in it. She was an OG actress, comedian from back in the day, man. You guys have recognized her from The Princess's Bride or Scrooge. Look, man, and she still brought her accent. I love that. She is also a new species that we have never heard of, which is interesting because it's a prequel and we've covered centuries after Star Trek and we have never heard heard of these people i would have been even more impressed if they had said it was a lurian but hey whatever lived thousands of years that's what i was thinking i was like hold up you lived all this time is it a, a, did we find another lurian nah it's some other thing that they just wanted to add to canon but whatever so what else look let me tell you she was awesome man look you as a lower and as a lower ranking uh lower decks person which is what basically spock and all of those people who decided to mute me on the enterprise all of them are basically lower enlisted people you ain't gonna be sitting up there trying to uh outsmart somebody who's a commander and up who got all this experience man they know how warp core breach worked it was smooth how she called him out on it and the fact that she knows amanda look the fact that she knows amanda lets me know right off the bat she's not a normal person because you just don't know amanda you look you don't know the ambassador's wife to where you just walk up to him be talking to her and having conversations with it coming out with it whatever anyway you still got una man that's being arrested so she's not on the show you got pike that's going to find uh a way to uh vindicate Una, so he's not on the show uh let me see the uh, next people you have that was stand out saying it was nurse chapel and dr umbinga they had a great thing up in there and they even used the weapon x wolverine uh berserker uh, uh super soldier serum which i anyway but uh, what else is going on man they was in space doc i just like to say that the enterprise is beautiful i know that it has some differences that are clearly noticeable but let's all agree that whether those differences is is 25% or 10%, the way that they showed the Enterprise and highlighted the Enterprise in this was beautiful. She was beautiful. Now, let's see what else is going on. Anyway, so Dr. Mbinga, man, look, look, everything that was going on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a little quick synopsis of what's going on. Basically, what's going on is this. They're in space dock. It picks up directly after the events of season two. Uh, they receive a call from uh, they receive a call from Nunya Singh, man, who had if you guys remember, man, she had left Starfleet and everything. But now she's on this moon, man. It's like my the lithium mining moon that's close to the Cleon uh, border, man. And it's like th the Cleons get thirty days, and then the Federation get thirty days, and you know it'll be a war if anybody overlap because you know with the Cleons, everything got to be an act of war. With the Cleons, everything is an act of war with the Cleons. Anything that to give them reason to part. Party, and party is war to Cleons. Anyway, that being said, speaking of Cleons, they did an all right job with showing the Cleons and how they look and everything like that. But what I was really impressed with was the blood wine. That looked really, really nasty, bloody. And it is the first time I had said to myself, you know what? I don't think I will ever try to blood wine. I'm going to stick to the Sumerian sunset uh, that uh, Guinan or Data can make uh, if they ever bring back the Star Trek experience in Vegas. Now, let me see what else was going on. Um... You got, you know, the little sub stories going on, but this is my thing. I wanted to talk about what I did not like, what I was not expecting from this this episode. First of all, let's get the tropes out the way. Let's get the tropes out the way. I am tired of space jumps. I am tired of unsuited, unprotected space jumps. And you doing a space jump at full impulse power, but Tommy, there's no inertia in space. But you did that in the whole asteroid field. By the way, asteroid fields in Star Trek always real condensed. I know that's so they can make the spaceship fly all through it real pretty. But if you're going to have a uh, um, asteroid field that, that, that condensed now, that means you got little particulates and everything that probably not being seen in comparison to those other big old rocks. And you're going to go jump out into space. Anyway, Nurse Chapel and Dr. Mbinga beat up a whole 
thirty something Cleons all by themselves with the Berserker Super Soldier Serum. I, I, and then nobody had bat left nothing. They like they couldn't shoot. But anyway, you may wonder why is Nurse Chapel and Doctor Bingham fighting on the starship? Man, it, it's another starship. It is a starship that they was building. And when I say they, the bad guys of this particular episode, which happens to be uh, ex Starfleet officers and Cleon people who wanted the war to continue so they could get some profit. And you didn't introduce not one Ferengi, didn't mention one Ferengi, none of that. But that's all right. Maybe other people got some motivation for profit. You didn't even mention the um, the Orion Syndicate. Like you could have threw somebody in there and be like, oh well, it's just these people who decided the war should just continue. But whatever. They build a spaceship under they under the ground, man, in a whole mine facility. Don't nobody know about it. Everybody, the other people getting sick from the photon torpedoes, man, and Dr. Big and them get captured, of course, because everybody know who y'all are. Man, look, uh the, the, they steal the enterprise. I am so tired of people stealing ships. If you steal it, first of all, if you steal a starship or, or any other ship, it's called mutiny. I don't know why New Trek always seems to think that you solve a problem with mutiny. Like every other episode is mutiny. They covered this in Star Trek, the original series, man, and in Star Trek Next Generation. To have a mutiny on a starship is practically unheard of, man. But y'all be like, hey, man, we need to go rescue this person. And uh, uh, Admiral April's like, N -n no. And y'all still like, oh, man, he said no. He had a very good reason because it'll start a war with the Cleons and millions and millions of people will die. But we going to go steal an Enterprise anyway because he said no. Ever since Discovery, man, look, they just been straight up just being like, I'm just going to mutiny. <sighs> no. And then you're going to mutiny, right? Fake a warp core breach, which is the classic, right? And, you know, Commander, Commander, uh, what was her name? Palia, whatever her name is. But uh, she helps you out. She's like, hey, man, if you're going to uh, fake a warp core, man, stop doing it so stupid. Like, because I used to teach, teach uh, warp cores at the academy and uh, y'all sucking. So try to do this and everything and there you go. Now, Captain, I mean, Admiral April releases the docking clamps, which has lets them off safely from the space station. Space station is cool, by the way, the habitats with the forest and all that stuff. That's nice. That That's beautiful. But instead of just warping off doing what you need to do, y'all want to come up with a catchphrase and then Spock going to stay the stupidest thing in the world. Something like science is fun. Like, like, he didn't say that, but it's akin to the level of stupidness coming from Vulcans. I don't like the way they're doing Vulcans. Ever since Enterprise with T'Pol, man, they've been tripping on Vulcans. For some reason, they seem to think that the mental barriers that a Vulcan have, man, just because you get mad once, they it, now they just uh, unbuildable, backable. They can't be, you know, reestablished. First of all, it was established a long time ago that the mental barriers of a Vulcan are damn near impenetrable, man. Even under duress, extreme torture, all that kind of stuff, man. The mental barriers of a Vulcan is one of the hardest things in the world to break. And just because you got mad, you know, look, I'm tired of them trying to instill human perspectives and emotions into Vulcans. Even when they did that in the original series with people with Mark Leonard or Leonard Nimoy, they were professionals at saying, okay, hey, uh, we know Vulcans are extremely emotional, but how can we portray this character true to Vulcans, right? And them being able to subdue their emotional side under almost any situation, man. And they did it perfectly. But ever since the Paul, man, every time you got a Vulcan in the show, man, they, they got some kind of emotional issue going on. What the fuck happened to the Vulcans? Anyway, anyway. They covered the whole thing of how Spock got started with the uh, playing the instrument for medical reasons. For medical reasons. Let me go off on the rant real quick. All right. I have to stop. I didn't want to have that film because that upset me. That was a lot of that was a lot of upsetting me in that. And I, I, uh, but anyway, so. Basically, man, this ship that they built underground flies from out from under the ground out, out the ground into space and the d7 cleon battle cruiser man that was beautiful especially when the disruptor bays opened up man that was beautiful but so this was the plan i guess this this was the plan so they want to start a war and they decide to build federation starship right 
And uh, yeah, they got photon torpedoes, all that stuff, which they could have just launched at the Cleon. But no, nah, they didn't do that. They say we're going to build a whole starship, fly it up there so that we could uh, pretend to attack a Cleon D-7 battlecruiser, which would just destroy this little makeshift ship of yours and be even more formidable than the Enterprise. We we, we finna do that. And now, uh, if we die, we die. It's a whole lot of us on this ship, man. But as long as we get that profit, that, that that's what we're going to do. But the Enterprise, man, they, look, Spock don't want to shoot the ship to stop the war because Nurse Chapel is on there. And then when Nurse Chapel beams back over to the ship, I understand Dr. Mbingo couldn't get up and go do that, but Spock is the one that's going to give a life-saving method. Where in the world was the medical staff? You think they would be like, it's Spock, man, move over, man, we got this. Like, oh, okay, well, they probably got evacuated during that whole little play warp core breach thing. Look, this episode, man, I was expecting so much from this episode. I didn't get it. I was disappointed, man. This is why exactly I'm not in my Star Trek uniform right now. And that's exactly why this is a bootleg review of this episode. I feel I wouldn't even take time to be actually sitting up here and talking about this stuff, man. Because, look, they're going to have to do better. And then, look, and then so you're trying to tell me the cliffhanger, the cliff, the uh, overall arc and storyline of the season is going to be the Goran capital ship, kind of like in Andromeda when the... Um, when that uh, capital ship from, from the people that was running around putting eggs in you, man, eating you up and all of them, that that's that's what we finna do, the Gorn. When the Gorn really wasn't people who were seen until the arena in Star Trek, the original series, and until they retconned it with Enterprise, but we're finna make the main focus some people that, look, as far as their first outing, as far as the first season episode, I mean, first the second season episode one, I wasn't impressed. I was not impressed at all. All right, they're gonna have to do a little bit better on it. Why does they keep trying to make Nurse Chapel and Spock a thing? Spock did not like Nurse Chapel like that. People look, he's now Nurse Chapel. She was head over heels for so Spock, but Spock was not in a Nurse Chapel like that. He had a wife. Even after a mock time, after he got divorced, he still wasn't in a uh, Nurse Chapel like that. He, he wasn't. He wasn't. Even during part far time, he still went in the, into Nurse Chapel. Get, get, come on, man, get out of here. But Nurse Chapel was a G. Nurse Chapel was a G. If you guys remember what our, the episode, What Our Little Girls Made Of, y'all will know Nurse Chapel is a G. You're her, a G. Man, she could, look, I like the way, because she's communications officer, that she could pick up on the nuances of people's accents and stuff like that. And it, it, it's, it's, it's a great thing. But... Those are the things that I liked about the episode, things I did not like about the episode. So I figured I'd end this video with that. And I think I'll just say right now, man, uh, what you guys think? Leave it in the comments and peace. Recycle and say the whales, man. You guys be cool.